In today's sponsored video, we're taking a look at a new project that's come across our radar, Graphlink. Their aim is to make blockchain data easy to grasp and easy to use for the general public. In other words, you don't have to be a programmer or know how to code in order to use some of these very powerful visualization tools. So Graphlink specifically is aiming to enable everyone to be able to generate and master blockchain data without having to write a single line of code. And as a product ready platform, Graphlink exhibits potential to lower the technical barrier for building innovative projects by coders, by non-coders, by enterprises, and really all kinds of entities all on the blockchain. Graphlink is a project that's aiming to build a gateway of sorts to automate blockchain functionalities. And it's opening the world of blockchain data to everyday users, not just the technically savvy. And Graphlink promises to facilitate easy reading of blockchain data and smart execution of transactions without getting stuck on technical matters. Thus, even the non-coders can create, update, or view blockchain data just like a third-party exchange. And in short, Graphlink protocol really is just a set of tools, including a multi-chain engine and integrated development environment, that's IDE, that facilitates effortless interfacing of blockchain. So to put it simply, a user who may want to fetch data from a decentralized or maybe even a centralized stream, they can do so without actually having to write a single piece of code. The user can then send this data to Telegram, to Webhook, to Discord, or to a trading bot. Thus, with the help of Graphlink protocol, anything and everything can be automated to suit users trading, DeFi, and other similar needs. Okay, but where exactly is the need here? What problem is being solved? Is there really this necessity to streamline data visualization? Well, we've mentioned it before on this channel many times, data really is the new oil and data plays a key role in real world blockchain application. However, in a blockchain, the data is distributed and to analyze this data, Visualization is really a great tool, and this is somewhat cutting edge stuff. You know, the fact that there are data analysts out there is nothing new, but there aren't a lot that are visualizing things, and those that are, are really bogged down by a lot of technical requirements. So effectively, this is delivering an interactive data experience that makes things more accessible, more approachable, and you're better able to intuit patterns and make forecasts based on those visualizations. What exactly is the concept of graphs? All of this is accomplished using graphs. And basically the graphs are a group of nodes that help automate on-chain and off-chain tasks. Interestingly, the graphs can be built by connecting ready-to-use block codes with a simple drag and drop plugins. For the deployment of graph, the users can import .glq files using that IDE tool. Once the file is imported, the file can be executed on the network using the engine tool. Graphlink is right now built on top of the Ethereum network. However, by the end of this year, 2021, the project does plan to roll out its own proof of stake or POS blockchain. How easy is it to create graphs using Graphlink? Well, Graphlink engine is the engine that uses threads to share the state of the different network streams. So basically these threads are graphs running over their own context and graphs, the users can create these by simply dragging and dropping plugins. For every graph execution, a unique hash is linked to it. And so if one were so inclined, for example, they could easily create a graph, for example, of Bitcoin's market cap and the Delta. So the change, let's say in a 24 hour period, they could take the data from coingecko.com and send that data to Webhook. Any user can set cycle, timer, or network flux streams to interrupt graphs. Thus, based on these, the graphs are executed and exited. And furthermore, the graphs can be scheduled for multiple auto runs. Each graph also has its own cost of execution. So to keep the engine running, and the protocol available, there is a cost of execution associated with this functionality. And that cost is calculated by block price. This is where GLQ, the role of Graphlink tokens comes into play. While GLQ is used to pay the execution after for running the graphs over the engine tool, 
It has a variety of functions and use cases in the GraphLink network. First time platform users can use GLQ tokens to make a transaction within the protocol. GLQ holders receive exclusive governance, right? GLQ owners can also pitch to make new block additions and help determine the ecosystem's execution fees in the future. And finally, GLQ is used to maintain a graph. This is used to keep the started graphs up and running. And interestingly, all of the tokens spent for keeping the graphs up and running are then burned from the total supply. And so as a result, the total token amount will reduce over time and will help GraphLink maintain a fixed level of dollar worth execution. Given that we like GraphLink protocol in terms of what it is they're trying to accomplish, we at Altcoin Buzz find it especially appealing that they are the size that they are right now. Taking a look at the price of the GLQ token, it is up over 22.3% on the day, just over four cents at the time of this recording. But more importantly, the market cap is very, very low right now at about $13.5 million. Now this is not financial advice, but as with any investment, altcoin or otherwise, the way to make a lot of money is to get in sufficiently early. And so if GraphLink is the kind of project that you like, if you know you continue after this video, you do some research, you do some due diligence and some homework on the GraphLink protocol and their team, and you like this project, well, you do have an opportunity to get in early right now. Again, market cap of only $13.5 million. So this is very early stages. I'm not suggesting you do anything or take action one way or the other. I'm not coercing you one way or the other. This is not financial or investment advice. I'm just pointing out that right now, this is a very young project. And uh, if you like what it is that they're about, well, they potentially have quite a bit of upside. How safe is GraphLink exactly? Well, GraphLink off chains the blockchain data. How can a user trust the data? To ensure that it's safe, every piece of information derived from centralized or decentralized networks is placed safely in the engine database storage. The engine infrastructure built on Kubernetes pods, which runs on multiple servers based on Amazon Web Services or AWS Clouds. This ensures the engine runs with high availability access and 99.99% uptime. And therefore, a company like Zapier.com can use GraphLink, for example, as a way to automate tasks from chain data in an effortless and secure manner without coding at all. The GraphLink engine has a two-layer design. Layer one is a testnet, which is used to test the graphs before the users send these graphs to the apps available on the app platform, which we see here. This layer attracts no execution cost and the graphs can be tested for free. But this layer has limited possibilities and activities. Layer two is a mainnet that allows platform users to run graphs in production with a small gas fee. To test a graph, GraphLink provides users an IDE, an integrated development environment, which can be used at zero costs. And this is a look at what the IDE resembles. On the left-hand side of the screen is a list of blocks, which are ready to use pieces of code. A user can search the block for which they want to create a graph for. So for example, let's say a user wants to create a graph for Telegram. Well, they can search Telegram in the blocks and drag and drop the plugins to build a flow. And once that flow is created, they can click on execution and the graph will deliver the results of execution at the bottom of the screen. We spoke about the GLQ token a moment ago, and by virtue of the way it's burned, there is a certain sense of deflationary engineering that is programmed into it. So to use the GraphLink platform, a user needs to have a MetaMask wallet, and the wallet is authenticated and authorized for use with the GraphLink online interface. The user then needs to deposit the amount into a specific smart contract. And this deposit is then used to manage the cloud balance to keep the graph running. A platform user can withdraw from this smart contract using the GraphLink API. However, the execution cost of the graph that is executed on the mainnet will be deducted from this deposit amount. If the graph is stopped, there will be no further costs deposited from the graph. As can be seen, each graph execution attracts an execution cost associated with it, which is paid in GLQ. This presents a strong use case for the GLQ token. All the GLQs collected as execution fees are then burnt 
And this is ultimately what helps create a deflationary model. And therefore, the idea is that with an increasing number of users, the number of GLQ burned will go higher and the tokens will become more scarce, hence the positive price action. You can follow Graphlink protocol on Twitter. Their handle is at Graphlink underscore proto. We'll link to all of this as well in the description below. You can read up on graphlink.medium.com about how they're enabling building blockchain developer tools without writing any lines of code. And you know, whether we're talking about Graphlink or any other project, I like to repeat the fact that it's all about mass adoption. Whatever makes something easier, whatever makes it more likely for either my parents or grandparents to be using blockchain-based tools, that is the path to mass adoption, that frictionless approach vector that will make all of this more appealing and more enticing to the masses. That's what we like about Graphlink Protocol. You can also join them here on their Telegram group and be sure to keep checking our website, altcoinbuzz.io for more information about Graphlink Protocol. Guys, as you know, none of this is financial advice. We're just alerting you to a new altcoin that does have a lot of potential, but it has crossed our radar because it is certainly interesting. So not financial advice, not investment advice, but best of luck if you do choose to invest. Stay safe out there, everybody. And as always, we do hope to see you again soon in our next video. Take care.